This episode of Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown features Academy Zero, Tacom's Italian Destroyer, Hanabus, and Sergeant York, Dora Wing's MS-230, Hobby Boss's USS Gato, Arma's Mustang, and Cactus Air Force, and ICM Soviet Airfield, the Game Square, and JU-88 Paravang. New product rundown brought to you by Hobby Zone USA, your source for hobby storage solutions, hard to find hobby tools, and aftermarket modeling needs. Hi, and welcome to New Product Rundown, Fine Scale Modeler's twice monthly look at the hottest new releases. I'm Kendra Bell. I'm Aaron Skinner. Let's fly straight into this episode with a brand new 148 scale A6 M2B0 Type 21 from Academy. This early war Japanese fighter has been well represented in plastic. Let's see how Academy has done it. First impressions are good, with surface detail on the fuselage being a combination of fine recessed panel lines and raised and engraved rivets. The rudder is molded with the port half, and the cowl is a single part with separate cowl flaps. The wings show the same fine detail as the fuselage, and there are optional parts to pose the flaps stowed or drooped, and there are tabs on the ailerons to do the same. The separate wing tips can be shown folded. Cockpit detail includes a floor, frame and bulkhead, seat, controls and instrument panel. There's even a pilot. To complement the detailed main gear base, the landing gear is keyed so the wheels align on the weighted spot. And there are optional parts to pose the gear doors open or closed. The same is true for the tail wheel and the tail hook can be shown stowed or extended. The engine has two banks of cylinders, push rods, firewall and exhausts with a one piece prop. An unused spinner is just one sign that Academy is planning to release other versions of the Zero. The clear parts have optional parts to pose the sliding section open. The gun sight and lights are also provided. The kit includes pre-cut masks. Decal supply markings for five Japanese Navy fighters, all in early war markings, two aboard the Akagi and one each from the Kaga, Soryu, and Hiryu. This is a sharp release with plenty of build options in the box. Next, we have Tacom's 1350 scale Italian Horizon class destroyer. Developed jointly by France and Italy, these air defense destroyers provide protection for the country's aircraft carriers. Italy has two of the ships, which entered service in 2007 and 2009. While the lower hull is a single part, the section above the waterline is split in half that includes parts of the superstructure with a separate rear plate. The halves sandwich a large section of deck with the landing pad and hangar for the AW-101 helicopter. Other deck sections include the forward part with the missile launcher and the upper sections fore and aft. Most of the blocky smokestack and masts assemble from multiple panels with sharp hatch and fitting detail molded on. Also sharp are the screws and rudders and the gun turrets, boats and other small details. Two finial style stands are included to display the model. Photo etch brass supplies railings, safety nuts for the landing deck, wipers for the bridge windows, antennas, ladders, rotors for the helicopter, and raised names for both Italian ships. Decals and color diagrams provide hull numbers and deck markings for both the Andrea Doria and the Caio Duilio. Tacom has picked a cool lesser known ship for this release and it looks like it should go together without much trouble. Sticking with Tacom in 1 350th scale, we have a set of Hanabu flying saucers. I'm not even going to broach the realism of these. Let's just say if you enjoy what-if projects, then German World War II flying saucers are right in your wheelhouse. This kit features all three sizes and variants. Let's start with the littlest Hanabu, which is roughly the size of a US half dollar coin. There's interior detail, a separate underside, landing gear, and gun turrets. The middle-sized Hanabu 2 is about three times the diameter of the one and has an upper turret, three lower guns, and complex landing gear. The big Hanabu 3 is 8 inches in diameter, has three three-gun turrets underneath and one up top, heavy-duty landing gear and a service ladder, but no interior. Decals provide insignia markings for two versions of each saucer, a green and gray day fighter kind of scheme and night fighter camouflage for the one, for the two, an RLM 74 and 76 camouflage and a light gray, dark gray ship, and for the three, one in three color splinter camo and a striking orange and white ship marked with Antarctic logos. Now, these just look like a fun break from the everyday. 
Next, another TACM release, a 135th scale M247 Sergeant York. This self-propelled anti-aircraft gun was based on the M48 hull. Given that, the kit shares many of those parts with the M48A5 we looked at a few episodes back. You can find that at the link in the description. New here are the parts for the M247's raised central engine deck, including open louvers at the rear and solid doors in place of the M48 finned covers. The upper part of the turret is mostly a single part that fits to the underside and is clad with additional panels up front, side stowage or service platforms, rear platform, and grab rails. The hatches are separate and the tracking radar can be posed up or stowed. The slide molded 40 millimeter gun barrels fit into the elevating mantlet so you should be able to pose the vehicle any way you want. The decals supply markings for five Sergeant Yorks. An overall green vehicle at Aberdeen Proving Ground in 1981, another in multicolored camo at the Army's Air Defense Artillery School in March 1982, one in a different Murdoch scheme at Aberdeen in 1985, and two what-if options for 247s that might have taken part in reforger exercises in the 1980s. Just as with other M48 kits, this looks great in the box and perfect if you want to build a Sergeant York. Dora Wings brings us the 148th scale Moraine Saulnier MS-230. This parasol wing plane was the French Air Force's primary trainer for most of the 1930s and a number were sold to other countries. This kit represents the foreign users and the decal sheet has markings for three aircraft. A Belgian Air Force trainer in 1932, a Spanish Republican aircraft preserved at a museum today, and a trainer in Luftwaffe service in 1941. The fuselage has fine panel lines on the metal cowl and a representation of stretched fabric on the rear. A similar effect is seen on the stabilizers and wing. The ailerons are separate and the struts look strong. Cockpit detail includes the floor, frames, seats, controls, and instrument panels. The exposed engine is well detailed with cylinders and pushrods, an intake, exhausts, and collector. The prop is a single part. A small photo etched metal fret supplies seat belts, engine details, control rods, and more. The small windshields are supplied as clear acetate to be cut out. This is another pretty plane from Dora Wings, and I believe that this is the first time this aircraft has been kitted in 148 scale in plastic. Now here's a simple kit, Hobby Boss's 1350th scale USS Gato. Unlike the previous version of this kit we looked at in early 2022, see the link in the description, this one represents the sub in its 1944 configuration. The main difference here is the conning tower with anti-aircraft guns in front and behind. There are also new parts for the periscopes and snorkels, and the deck gun mounts forward of the conning tower. The small decal sheet has numbers for the bow and conning tower, and there's a photo wedge brass nameplate for the stand. This simple straightforward kit might be the perfect weekend project. Sounds like it. Arma Hobby continues to release new boxings of its terrific 172nd scale Mustang, this time a P-51B. We looked at the P-51C kit in detail in an earlier NPRD, and Paul Boyer built one for review. You can find links to both in the description. The plastic is the same, so let's focus on what's unique here, the markings. Decals provide options for four aircraft. Captain Bud Anderson's Old Crow from June and July 1944, First Lieutenant James Clark's The Mighty Midget, which has my favorite mouth ever on the nose, Geronimo, flown by Captain John Pugh of the 362nd Fighter Squadron, and as a bonus, the instructions show an alternate marking plan for that plane, and finally, John Thornell Jr.'s Patty Ann II from the 328th Fighter Squadron. Those are some colorful options on a nice kit. Also from Arma is this deluxe set for the Cactus Air Force, the name given to the Allied aircraft assigned to Guadalcanal in 1942. This kit contains a 172nd scale F4F4 Wildcat and a 172nd scale P400 or P39D Aero Cobra. We looked at both of these kits in detail in previous videos and you can find them at the links in the description below if you want a good look at the parts. Focusing on what we haven't seen before, there are 3D printed parts for each aircraft. On the Aero Cobra, this cramped section includes a seat with belts, gun breeches for the cockpit, controls, the top front of the nose around the gun muzzles, optional exhausts, and the muzzles of the 37mm cannon and wing machine guns. For the Wildcat, 3D printed parts provide the seat with harness, various cockpit controls, engine ignition and harness, the landing gear, chains and pulleys, exhausts, and bombs and wing racks. 
Decals supply markings for four Air Cobras and four Wildcats. There's a P-400 named Hell's Bell, flown by Lieutenant Robert Ferguson. Beth, a P-39D, piloted by Captain Paul Bechtel, commander of the 12th Fighter Squadron. A P-400 known as Fancy Nancy, flown by Lieutenant Richard Johnson. And a P-39D from the 68th Fighter Squadron. For the Wildcat, you get markings for a Marine fighter in which Lieutenant Samuel Johnson downed two Betty Bombers on November 12, 1942. And another from VMF 223, flown by Major Marion Carl in February 1943. A Navy bird from VF 5 aboard USS Saratoga, in which Lieutenant Pug Sutherland II shot down the first Japanese bomber over Guadalcanal before being shot down by Japanese ace Lieutenant Saburo Sakai. And a plane flown by Naval Aviator Lieutenant Swede Vichtaza of VF 10 aboard USS Enterprise. He was credited with shooting down two valves and five kates in a single mission, becoming an ace in a day. This is another terrific package from Arma that combines great plastic parts, 3D printing, and marking options. Now look, I know, we've joked around a lot on this show that I insist that every model that comes up would look good in a diorama. But this kit is ready-made to be one. ICM's 172nd scale, Soviet Military Airfield 1980s. The kit includes a MiG-29, the same kit most recently used in ICM's Ghost of Kiev kit, two ZIL-131 trucks, a command vehicle with a box on the bed, and an APA-50M electric starter, and a set of styrene Soviet-style airfield apron parts. The MiG-29 is an older tool, but it features recessed panel lines on the fuselage and wings and stabilizers deep intake trunks, and a decent simple cockpit, and a selection of weapons. Decals and color diagrams give options for two fulcrums, a Russian Air Force fighter in Germany in 1994, and a Ukrainian plane in 2000. We looked at the APA-50M in detail in a recent new product rundown, which you can see at the link in the description. The ZIL-30 command vehicle shares many of the same parts, including the frame and engine, and cab exterior and interior. Different are the base for the box and the upper part that gets details like grab handles, a ladder, and more. Decals and color diagrams show two options, one in overall green and one in sand and green camouflage. All of that can be posed on plates to model a typical Soviet-era airfield. The kit includes 30 of the parts. So with all of that, add a few figures, yeah, you have a nice diorama. In the same episode we looked at the APA-50M, we also got a preview of ICM's 1 12th scale circle figure from the Netflix series Squid Game. Here's the second release, the square figure. There are torso, leg, and head parts. The arms include a hand with a pistol, and there's a holster for the belt. As with the other kit, there is a decal for the face mask and a base. Based on Jeff Lamott's review of the circle figure, this kit should go together fairly easily and allow you to focus on painting. Finally, here's the latest version of ICM's 148 scale Junkers JU-88, an A8 Paravane. This large metal frame attached to the front of the plane was designed to cut barrage balloon cables. The model features fine recessed panel lines on the fuselage, stabilizers, wings, and nacelles. The control surfaces, including the flaps, are separate. There's a good cockpit with panels and radios, and both engines are supplied along with detailed landing gear. Sharp, clear parts show off the crew areas. The parts for the Paravane, including its supports, are finely molded. Decals provide markings for three JU-88s, one with black undersides from 5 KG-30 in 1941, one from KG-50 with blue undersides in 1941, and a similar one from KG-51 in 1941. This looks like another terrific model of the JU-88 from ICM. Look for reviews of the Zero, Italian Destroyer, Hanaboos, and MS-230 at FineScale.com. Where you can also find other reviews, stories, how-to articles, and more. And a link to the CombatHobbyStore.com where you can pick up books, tools, gifts, all kinds of things that'll just make your day. Thanks for watching. I'm Kendra Bell. I'm Aaron Skinner, and I'm never going to let you down. Protect. Protection, uh, uh, <laughs> take trunk, uh, exterior, and uh, broach the real of his bro. What else can you say? Deca De oh, oh, sorry, that's, still that's mine. Right. Oh, it is. You know, it's, I mean, sorry, it's yours. Sticking with Takam, my hair. So, this looks like another terrific kit of the sorry, my hair. Armahobby continues. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, I was like scratching my face. 
Lieutenant Swede Vichat, Vich, Vichtaza. Vichta, Vichta. How's your Swedish? I don't know if I can help you there either. The, Vitaza, Vita, Vitaza. This is another terrific package from Arma that combri combines. Combines. <laughs> Combining, isn't that when you, you know, put two things together and stew them up a little bit? Oh yeah, yeah. That was gonna be one of the highlights of the show. <laughs> Thanks for watching, I'm Hells Bell. <laughs> and I'm Aaron Skinner, and I'm never gonna let you down.